Floor 96 done easy. <laughs> this floor's a joke. Hey, what's going on guys? This is Arkadin and we're here again with another Abyss floor, this time 96. And I'm going to be honest, when I said it was kind of a joke, I mean literally it's, it's not actually that hard. This is one of the few floors that we currently have uh, in this 91 to 100 zone that actually sort of is a breather if you have even, I, I want to say the right characters, but it's not even the right characters. It's do you have AoE characters and do you have anything that's AoE that's not a water unit at this point? And you should probably be okay. So I'll show you the team that I ended up taking. You can see them kind of here on the screen. This was just an option that I used and I'll explain the characters that were definitely MVPs. And then a couple of them, like at least half of my team is actually just, it could have been replaced by a lot of other things. So we'll talk about that here in just a second. Let's take a look at the team. Today, we're going to start off with the heat. Healer. The healer for this team that I chose was a Cades. Obviously a fire unit into Bologna, who is a green unit. Not a huge deal. It actually is just beneficial. You get the class advantage here. Uh, Akades, the reason I chose her was I wanted to be able to clear off debuffs and I wanted to be able to cycle between the S3 and S2 uh, constantly, thinking that that was going to be a good chunk of heals and, and was going to clear off debuffs enough. If I'm honest with the team that I used, um, I think Tamarin would have been a, a perfectly fine choice here as well. I even think even with the class disadvantage, you could have gotten away with Angelic Montmorency. Anything that's going to be cleansing buffs and giving pretty good heals will be fine here as far as healers go. Next up, I chose Tenebria, Fire Tenebria again, class advantage, which is super nice. She has uh, AoE defense breaks. She has AoE uh, slows, which is kind of nice. Just a lot of AoE damage on this particular character. If you get asleep on the S1, it's nice. It's not necessary. Um, this was more just for the reality of I want to make sure that I'm getting defense buffs or defense breaks rather all the time. And I'm able to kind of cycle through and kill off those brooms that you'll see as we talk through the fight here in a bit. Killing off those brooms is actually like the main mechanic of this particular fight. And we'll talk about that in a little bit. Next up, we're going to be talking about some of the MVPs for this particular floor, and Green Bologna is absolutely no slouch for this. Having the ability to do percentage damage on her S1, her S3 has defense break, and she's able to just proc it constantly by getting stacks of focus. Uh, she is just unbelievable. I ended up putting her on Bloodstone because she doesn't really need any extra damage because her damage is already percentage. And so as you can see, like the attack on her is very, very low. It's it's almost irrelevant there. Her damage is, go is going to exist either way. So may as well get some heals off. It was actually really nice to have that particular uh, artifact for her. Uh, you'll see why she's a huge MVP when you're killing off all of the, uh, all of the brooms as well, because she just does so much damage, particularly uh, with those defense breaks and then the S1s right afterward. Finally, and I know not everybody has this character, um, but a lot of people got to trade in for characters recently from him because he just recently got nerfed. And even after the nerf, he is perfectly fine for this content. Uh, I was not able to build him as tanky as I would have liked, like if, if Champ Z didn't need all of the extra effectiveness. But as you can see, he has plenty of effectiveness now to be able to transfer over the debuffs. Um, and still, even with this much tank, is fine. He's actually totally fine for this particular fight. Uh, with all of the incoming debuffs between the silence and uh, the poisons and all the different stuff that's going to be sent your direction, you actually can just send it right back to the boss, send it right back to the broomsticks, um, and keep yourself alive pretty easy with Champ Z. Um, amazing MVP type character for this if you have him. If you don't, again, another AoE character could easily be fine here, whether you decided to use Arbiter Vildred. I mean, I, I, mean, I use that as an example, but Honestly, any of them would be just fine for this particular boss. So now that we got the team, you know what's next, boys. Into the fight. So in phase one of this particular fight, honestly, the first wave is so unnecessarily easy to a point where when you have this many damage dealers on your team, you're actually going to crush it so fast that you won't even be able to build up the souls that you might want to have, uh, which is fine, actually. You're not too worried about it. Uh, you won't need or want to use Arkies until quite a bit later in the fight anyways, and in this particular fight, you don't lose souls from anything. So you can continue stacking them as you go. Um, I did auto this for a little bit, but then I realized, what's the point in autoing this? I may as well uh, click through specifically, get as many souls as I can while still keeping Akades on her S3, S2 rotation because I know that the computer won't do that quite as well uh, by not giving the S2 to her. So decided to end up clicking through. All said, this particular wave is a huge joke. There's, there's literally nothing to worry about. You will destroy it so fast with all of your debuffs and all of your AoE damage. Um, so after that, we'll talk about phase two.
So now that we've reached the phase of the fight that is the main portion of it, let's talk through some of the mechanics of the boss and how they interact with the broomstick. So you have Bologna and you have four broomstick uh, mini mobs that you're going to end up taking on at the exact same time. Those broomsticks have the ability to put poisons on your team and whenever they actually use their, uh, their S3, it actually heals all the allies and heals Bologna. So with that many broomsticks up, right off the bat, you're focusing the broomsticks. You're not focusing on Bologna whatsoever. Um, Bologna will take some inevitable damage um, just from your AoE as you're AoEing down all of these broomsticks. However, she will still be doing the rest of her mechanics while this is happening at the same time. So to explain her mechanics, on her S3, when it actually gets all the way charged up, it'll attack all of you when you have no buffs. Um, it will actually decrease combat readiness by 100% before stunning for one turn, and it will revive one of those broomsticks every single time that happens. One of the more annoying mechanics in this particular fight is the S2 from Bologna, which when it attacks you, it silences your whole team for two turns, and then it will take and transfer all of the debuffs that Bologna has on her and move them over. So in the case of our particular team, we have a lot of debuffs that can either be transferred over from the Cesarato or the Green Bologna, or even and then adding that Tenebria, it's a lot, a lot, a lot of extra debuffs. So that tends to be problematic if the S1 is usable right afterwards for Bologna. So if Bologna S1's any of your characters and you don't actually get those buffs off you, or rather those debuffs off of you, you will probably get one shot. She hits very, very hard. Um, and the way that it works is it will attack you, it'll decrease your defense for two turns, and it will actually um, have damage dealt that will increase proportional to the number of debuffs inflicted on your character. So if she's S2'd and transferred all of the debuffs over to you and you haven't transferred them back, you're gonna get hit like a truck. So keep that in mind. There are different ways to actually get rid of debuffs in this particular fight. Um, obviously one of them in our case is a Katie's. If you had another healer like Momo or um, let's see, Momo or Tamarin, there's also the ability to cleanse on those. So you could use and wait for the S3 on Tamarin. However that looks for your team, just make sure you're getting rid of them before somebody gets S1 after Bologna does an S2. Um, but there's other ways as well too, and you'll notice every single time one of the broomsticks actually dies, it will get rid of every debuff on your entire team, and it will then also give a defense buff to everybody on your team. So, if you can time it correctly, after Bologna does an S2, if you are able to actually take out a broomstick soon afterwards, or, or within the turn before Bologna goes again, you will actually get rid of all those debuffs and put up a defense buff on yourself, giving you so much more survivability as the fight goes on. And so that's one way to be able to kind of manage that and, and, and work around that particular mechanic. And you'll notice I do that several times where I'm very, very debuffed and I just end up killing a broomstick just to kind of switch it over and, and move it along. After you've killed all of the broomsticks and Bologna's just reviving one broomstick at a time, you still want to always be focusing the broomstick first and Bologna second. Uh, the broomstick, no matter at what point or phase that you get rid of it, whether it's for Bologna's S2 or not, um, just needs to be needs to be finished because it's always going to be healing Bologna. So getting rid of that is huge. Uh, but after you've made it through that phase and you've crushed down all of the all of the broomsticks and moved on to actually putting damage into Bologna, you'll notice that your green Bologna is going to hit very hard because again it's percentage damage. So she'll hit plenty hard on single target and you'll eventually just kind of like run her down. Um, biggest things again to watch out for on this fight, um, if you feel that you that you need to get a buff up, again, Arky is a great option for A, forcing the fight to go along a little bit faster because you can actually get extra damage there, um, as well as recognizing your rotation with your Akades, in my, in my case, or wherever your healer's cleanse is so that you're able to deal with debuffs and not, get, and not just get one shot. Um, but otherwise, this fight is extremely straightforward, and I don't believe you'll have too many problems with it.
So that's pretty much it guys. Uh, there are a couple of things you could maybe potentially change out if you want to fix it. Obviously we have three defense breaking characters, which is super, super nice for this particular floor. Uh, but if you wanted to do something that had maybe a little less of that and a little bit more tank to be able to survive a bit longer, um, if some of your characters were getting knocked out quickly, uh, I, you could bring in uh, Lilius, who has the potential to cleanse off some of those debuffs, has AoE damage, dual attacks, um, which could be really, really helpful, as well as a taunt mechanic if you needed to move stuff around. So you could maybe change out Tenebria for that. Uh, there's lots of different options for this. Truly, I think you'll come up with uh, a lot of different combinations when you're giving it a shot. And so this is just an example of one that can work. All that said, thank you guys so much for your um, support and your liking, your commenting, subscribing to the channel. We really appreciate all of you guys so, so, so much. And we will see you guys in the next video. Have a great, great day. Peace.